What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're doing a book review. Happy New Year. We're going to be talking about Michael Lewis's latest project, The Fifth Risk. As you can see, it's his newest book about American politics. It was an amazing read. Got it for Christmas. Blasted through it in two days. So I'm going to give you guys a summary, read through my favorite quotes, etc. First, I wanted to give you a brief background about Michael Lewis, though. He is an unbelievable author, Flash Boys. He also wrote Moneyball, which is the book about the Oakland A's, um, and that got turned into a movie with Brad Pitt. So he's done an, an unbelievable track record. Uh, this is a New York, he's a New York Times bestselling author. Um, he has this amazing knack for turning relevant, complex, you know, economic trends that are happening today into very amazing, riveting novels um, that are these brilliant stories that are super educational about different parts of the financial, political, economic system. Every single one of his books I've thoroughly enjoyed. Read Michael Lewis. You will learn. You'll love it. Um, I can't recommend him highly enough. So the fifth risk, it all starts out with Trump. So the book is basically sets this tone of like, what is the president's role in government? What's the president's administration's role in government? How does that affect how the U.S., the country, and the economy operates as a whole? And this is a fascinating lens because, you know, you hear about Trump all the time, but what we've never really heard or what I've never really read about is really looking at Trump's administration and how they're fundamentally operating the U.S. government and how that compares to what Obama did and what Bush did. And so Michael Lewis, they do, they walk you through, you know, pretty uh, in detail what it's like leading up to Trump's election and, you know, his time before he was elected, then when he gets elected and what he does with his transition team. Um, and specifically, like I said, how that compares to previous presidential transition teams and, you know, how he goes about putting in place different directors. And I mean, it paints a picture that is incredibly bleak and, you know, I mean, I'll just say it, I don't want to get too political, but personally, I'm not a huge fan of Trump and this book made me way less of a fan. I mean, the way that him and his administration is going into office, according to this picture that Michael Lewis paints, is basically they have zero preparation. Um, you know, Obama, for instance, you know, usually the typical process is the old administration prepares tons of documents and spends months with the new administration training them on all the functions and roles of different governments, which is, you know, incredibly com complex an important process of passing the torch. This is something that gets happens constantly, you know, bipartisan, Republican or Democrat. They help each other through this because it's so important for the country. And Trump's team, unlike Bush and Obama, you know, has just totally disregarded this process, isn't trying to learn anything from the people who are running the administration in the past. They're not listening to who they should appoint. They're not learning about what even that Department of Government does. Like, there's just not a willfulness to learn about the operations and to actually do good for the citizens. There's this constant common theme of like selfishness and Trump and everyone in his administration doing best for themselves or their company that they're running and, and creating policy with that in mind, not trying to run the government from the perspective of what's good from the citizens. So this is an incredibly scary um, proposition. And that's sort of the, the first half of the book sets the tone and the reality of how Trump is handling the U.S. government. And it, in a word, it's totally unprepared and unorganized and it's scary. And then the second half of the book sort of takes this really interesting twist of describing all of the crazy things our government does that you would never think about that are so, so important to our, our safety. Like they talk about this huge, you know, site that was used to build nuclear, nuclear weapons way back in the Cold War and how there's so much radioactive waste from that site and how the management of how we pay and how much we pay to clean up that site each year um, it, it can have huge implications on the natural environment of thousands of people and, you know, all these different species. It, it, it takes you through a very realistic and visceral look at what the government does, how it saves our lives in so many weird different ways that you could never expect um, and just really doubles down on the importance of the government. So now I'm going to go through a couple of my favorite parts of the book. Um, and this is right before he gets elected. Um, Steve Bannon was talking to Trump about removing the transition team that every president normally has and Steve Bannon goes not even Steve Bannon thought it was a good idea I was fucking nervous as shit Bannon later told friends I go holy fuck this guy Trump doesn't know anything and he doesn't give a shit and that's the end of the intro to the book. So that sets the tone. And that's Steve Bannon, someone working inside Trump organization who said that. Then, you know, about to the middle of the book, right leading up to the inflection, is uh, Michael Lewis interviews John McWilliams, this person who operated in the government and describes, um, is describing the systematic risks that are posed to the citizens of the United States and all of these different natural disasters that could impact us and kill us. And he, he lists them out. You know, he's talking about like Iran, uh, you know, climate change, North Korea, all all of these things and the fifth biggest existential risk um, which is why how the title of this book came the fifth risk is quote project management and so this is this this notion that 
Um, you have to expect the unexpected and that people who are managing the projects that this government is doing is the biggest existential risk to the government is that the management of those projects will be inadequate, that the person managing that decaying nuclear reactor is going to mess up and not care about it and not put the adequate project management in to make sure the radioactive waste doesn't leak into the river and then it leaks into the river. And so this, this lack of organization and cohesion in leadership in the government is the fifth risk. Project management was all he said is the quote in the book here. And so that is sort of the tone that the book sets. And the second half of the book actually kind of lost me from an interest and, and story percentage wise because it goes way off of Trump. They almost don't even mention Trump in the second half of the book at all, in the second half of the book at all. And it just goes on describing like how this tornado in this one town is relying on the data from the weather service and how the publicly available data from the weather service that the taxpayers are subsidizing and paying for is so crucial to keeping us all safe and how the guy that Trump appointed to be the head of the National Weather Service works is the CEO of AccuWeather, which is the largest weather company who's trying to keep all the data private and have no one access it so they can charge people money for that data, which is so ironic because that's the data the taxpayers have already paid for and now they want to make it private and resell the weather back to those same taxpayers for the data. So the taxpayers, us, are paying for that weather data twice and how it just goes beyond screwing over the citizens in that it's actually making us so much less safe. You know, on the website of all the different agencies, Trump's removing all of the data, not letting people access it. And this is, you know, resulting in a tremendous lack of insight and transparency. And, and these organizations that are relying on this data are sending critical warnings, like in the example of the book of like, there's a tornado coming. You know, when do we put out the warning? How do we do the warning? How do we evacuate people? How do we inform these people um, that the government is helping them, even though they hate the government because they all voted for Trump and want to remove the service that is saving them from the tornado? Like, anyway, I hope that made sense. But it's, it's this uh, the book is sort of the entire first half of the book is setting the stage for why government is so important and just understanding that the role the president's administration plays is incredibly pivotal and, and important in all of these agencies that are saving our lives every single day and how much responsibility is on Trump and his administration to run these agencies properly. And then the second half of the book is showing how crappily Trump is living up to that incredibly huge task and how this misalignment and in incentives um, with people in Trump's administration caring more about their personal self, their personal profit, their personal financial well-being than the well-being of the citizens is like destroying our government from the inside out. That's sort of the tone of the book. Um, and, I, you know, I think it's obviously biased um, if you're liberal. Liberal, you're probably going to agree with this more than if you're not liberal. But really, I think this is a bipartisan book and is super good in the fact that it's educational because I don't really know how government works. Like, I feel like I'm super un uneducated. I didn't know almost anything in this book. And so I think all of us are sort of going through this period in America where we've sort of been oblivious to how our political system works, what the government does, and we're all learning about it at the same time. And I think it's, it's, it's kind of sad that we don't know so much about it, but it's super exciting that we're all learning about it and that the government has become a topic of fascination. And so my biggest takeaway from this book is that the government is incredibly important and way more important than I thought. And it sets the fabric of, of this, the society we live in and, you know, you know, builds the streets that we can drive on. It sets up the laws that allow you to create a business. Like it's the platform for capitalism that um, and, and the platform for hyper change and innovation that we rely on and we take for granted. And it's super important and um, that we should really be praising people that work in government and really be idolizing them and, and making them out to be the heroes they are because they're not getting paid. Many of them are doing it for the mission of trying to be good for their citizens and that's an incredibly noble cause and the book shows countless countless stories of people who are in government doing the right thing getting no recognition for the incredible stuff they're doing and I think that needs to change so that's something that I personally took away from this book is like if you know someone in government if you work in government huge shout out thank you and we should be honoring these people more and holding them in higher regard and just placing more of an importance on the government in general yeah so this book kind of leaves me oddly incredibly scared that our country is going in the wrong direction, but also oddly hopeful that um, I think a negative jolt of messing up is sort of the wake up call that at least my generation needed to get more interested in this politics. And, and, and I think in the long run, that'll be a good thing. But I think in the near term, after reading this book, I'm less confident in the, in the direction and the management of the U.S. government. I think we're, het, we're losing power and relevance daily. Um, the, uh, and the government is so important. And I think we take so much of it for granted. This is a very, very sobering read. It's a reality. Uh, it's super educational. It's, it hooked me from start to finish. It's only 200 pages. I blasted through it in like two days. I would recommend it to 
everybody, everybody, I'm going to give it 4.5 stars. I really wanted to give it five stars because it's just so important politically. And I think everybody should, I think you have to read it if you're an American, um, just to understand what's happening and get more viewpoints and just learn. But um, it was, a, I am taking off a half star because the second half of the book was like a little bit long and, and, and like, I feel like they could have gotten to the point quicker and tied it back to Trump a lot more effectively than they did. And it sort of ended with loose strings. And so, yeah, that, that is the, the thing. Oh, and I do want to end it the review by reading you the last line of this book, which talks about that tornado that I mentioned and how this lady who is by herself in her house miraculously survived, even though her house and her barn were totally devastated. And, and so then they're asking her like, why did you want the tornado to knock down her barn? And she's like, well, I always wanted the tornado to knock down my barn, but I never wanted it to knock down my house. Then and they're like, well, why did you want it to knock down your barn? And she goes, that barn is where my husband committed suicide 10 years ago. And then the book ends with the last sentence shortly after that, that says, it's what you fail to imagine that kills you. And that's sort of the end thesis that this and lesson that this book leaves you with, which is this mentality that people in the government have, which is that the thing that we cannot imagine, that we can't predict, that's never happened is probably a huge risk. And we have to prepare for the thing that's unimaginable. And that is the most exist, the biggest existential risk that can stem from project management. And that's sort of the ending uh, thread throughout the whole book. It's what you fail to imagine that kills you. So I'll leave you with that. Definitely a thinker. Thank you so much for tuning in. Would love to know what you think in the comments below. Um, have you read it? What do you think? Um, just anything would be awesome. Also, huge shout out to all of our Patreon supporters, producers um, for supporting the channel. Anyway, this is Hyper Change. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.